outlined in a 384-page report on the state of DCFS. More than 100 kids died in 2019 despite having prior contact with the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. WBD investigates where the system failed and what has to change to protect our at-risk children. But we do want to warn you, some of the video in this report can be difficult to watch. In her pink crown, Princess Rika J, as her family called her, looks every bit the part. But the eight-year-old smile hit a gruesome reality. Go. Go to my room. Go to my room. Months of torture captured in videos on her abuser's cell phone, ending with a final fatal kick to the stomach in January of 2019. Her father's then-girlfriend, Cynthia Baker, was convicted of her murder in McLean County late last year. Rika's mother, Antoinette Roundtree, says Baker isn't the only person responsible for her daughter's death. I told DCFS, man, y'all got to pull my baby out. Y'all got to take her somewhere safe. An annual report on DCFS released this month includes an inventory of abuse cases. The agency connected to 123 kids around the state who died in 2019. Ten of them lived in central Illinois, including Rika. The single page in the report detailing her short life describes a 2017 investigation after she told her mother she'd been whipped with a belt. Antoinetta reported the abuse. The investigation closed 24 hours later quote, as no marks were observed on the child. Whenever they did their investigations, I bet they didn't lift her shirts. I, I bet they didn't have her pull her pants down. If they would have looked at her, they would have seen. 18 months later, Rika would be dead. Her autopsy revealing approximately 30 scars on her back and torso indicative of abuse. They need to change the way that they look at stuff. The system has to change. DCFS has to change. A DCFS spokesperson declined to comment on Rika's case, instead writing in a statement to WMBD that the agent challenged by funding cuts and staff reductions, and that, quote, overhauling the department and reversing longstanding problems in the child welfare system won't happen overnight. In general, you, you can't just go in and put a Band-Aid on one piece here. You certainly can't sit and blame DCFS. Singularly. Now, certainly they can make improvements like we all can, um, and they know that. Tony Reardon leads the Center for Youth and Family Services, ranked number one in the state for large foster care program agencies and serving 1,500 kids a year. He says overall the system has shifted. Decades ago, 50,000 children were in foster care in Illinois. Now that number is less than 20,000 as the state moves away from removing kids from their family homes. Well, the cases we do have in care now, they're, pr they're probably harder than they used to be. The cases that we do leave at home, there are a lot more. Putting pressure on a system with a shrinking workforce and a growing caseload. And Reardon says solving that problem is larger than any one agency. This isn't a Peoria you know, only issue. This, and this is a societal issue in general about you know, creating a uh, you know, institutions and supports for families and children to help them thrive and to be safe. And a spokesperson for DCFS says the 2020 budget allows the agency to hire 300 new employees and provide more than 2,800 existing employees with new child safety training. Medicare, Social Security. Okay. So y'all just heard that, and shout out to Apostle Jabril, if I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, for sending me this article as well as this um particular story and it's another Rika Roundtree update and let me tell you right now watching the video because y'all couldn't see it and in a way I'm kind of glad that you didn't because looking at that I almost wanted to drop my phone and like do the air punch like uh Trey did on Boys in the Hood just watching that because for the first time ever I was able to see footage of this little girl being abused. Like when you heard the crying in the background, that was her. And in the, and I'm going to describe to you what, what I saw. She's crying while this Cynthia Baker bitch was recording her and literally telling her to go into the room where she probably was going to abuse her some more. And that's probably why she was crying. Cause she was scared and she ran into the room. And then the next part I saw was pretty much something that I think was described through text in a video that I was talking about where she was, she had no clothes on. Like when they showed the video, she had no clothes on. She was face backwards and they had to blur out the bottom because she had no clothes on. And she was holding two 
cans in her hand. Like I don't know if it was canned food or something like that, but they were big cans to the point where they were too heavy for her to hold, but she was standing there holding them like that, probably saying, look, you're going to stand here and you're going to hold these cans, and if you even drop, I'm going to whip you. It kind of reminded me of that. Like That's the kind of torture that she was going through. And then they show pictures of the bruises on her body like she had bruises on her face she had a black eye she had bruises on her neck and it even showed a picture around her mouth where that cynthia baker hit her so hard that she ended up chipping one of her teeth and the main focal point of this video is of course dc fs and how rika's mother was telling them that look they have to get like she said in the video in the audio that they need to get her daughter out of that environment because she's not safe there. And they said they went over there and did a welfare check, looked at her and said that they couldn't do anything because she had no marks on her body. They did a piss poor job of doing their so-called investigation. And that all it did was made it look like the mother didn't know what she was talking about. Like she was somehow crazy. And I'm still pissed as all hell at the father. I'm sorry, the sperm donor, because he is not a father in my eyes for allowing this to happen. And he has the nerve to say that he wants to be found not guilty of what he's being charged with. No. He needs to be found guilty and he needs to do just as much jail time as the witch he laid up with. Like, I wish y'all could have seen these images. As a matter of fact, and you can watch it at your own risk. I will leave the link pinned in the comments below and you can watch it for yourself. Like I have to like I'm showing a lot of restraint right now, but y'all probably can see that I'm fighting with it with my tone. Like I really want to go off right now, but I'm trying to stay as calm as possible. Just looking at those images and thinking about what happened to this girl pisses me off. And the department, the the, uh, department of what is this DCFS? They didn't do anything. Also, in the video, if you didn't hear, it said in 2019, under DCFS, 10 children died for the state for the state that they are in. They did a piss poor job and they failed a lot of children besides Rika Roundtree last year. And that doesn't surprise me because look at what happened with Devontae Hart and his siblings. They were trying their hardest to get the same people to go out there and do welfare checks on him and his family. And they dropped the ball as well. Now, what do those two have in common? Black children. Now, I'm willing to bet you if these are white kids that were in this position, they would have did a way better investigation. But because they were black, they were seen as disposable. Like, like I said, there's really no good person in this case. And what I also found to be very interesting is when I typed in a picture of uh, typed in Rika Roundtree's name into the Google image search, every picture that I saw of her with her mother, she was always smiling. She was always happy. I think the worst thing that could have happened was her mother going to jail because it seems to me that she was in better care with her mother than she was with her sperm donor and that witch that he decided to lay up with like if you don't believe me go on to google and type her name in and all the pictures that you see with her mother she's smiling and she's happy and it's a genuine smile and a genuine happiness but in all the other pictures that you could see of her she looks drained she looks miserable that's because she was in a bad situation and no one cared her sperm donor didn't care. The witch that killed her definitely didn't care. And DCFS didn't care either. And the nerve of that palm colored male to get on there and basically try to say it wasn't their fault. I could have reached through cyberspace and Falcon punched him dead in his neck for saying some shit like that. Talking about it wasn't their fault. They did a wellness check and, and they didn't find anything. They didn't check because they didn't they weren't trying to look for anything Truth be told. They hate dealing with these kinds of cases because they don't want to deal with all the legalities. They don't want to deal with all that paperwork. So they slap a bandaid over a flesh wound and then the flesh wound just continues to bleed out into the 
flesh dies. In this case, the flesh was named Rico Roundtree. Like this, like I told you, I was going to stay on top of this case. Like if it is, if there's anything that I could learn anything new about it, I was going to continue to talk about it because this like this case ever since learning about it just burns my spirit right now. Because like I said, I hate when I see stuff happen to our kids. I really do. And what makes it worse is that you have someone who looks like us. And I'm talking about her sperm donor who led her into this situation. Like I said, that's why I believe he is just as responsible for this as Cynthia Baker is. All she did was finish it off. But like I said, just looking at those images and hearing her cry in that audio and that video and seeing her and her and seeing how she looked like someone had described to me how she looked. You see how she looks right here. She looks pretty normal. When I looked at that video, she looked rough. She looked like a I don't want you know, I'm not going to say that word. She looked. She almost looked in some cases, depending on how she looked beneath her clothing, she could have been malnourished like I would not be surprised if that Cynthia Baker was starving her and was not, you know, not feeding her. And it sounds to me like she probably could have treated her like she was a slave. I would not be surprised. Cynthia, and then that Cynthia Baker has the nerve to say that she wants a new trial because she feels that her, her attorney didn't do what she felt he was supposed to do. And that was to get her off. They need, I hope, I hope the court's, Ashley was able to look at this footage because this, like I said, this is my first time seeing it. Hopefully they were able to get a glimpse of that and realize that this bitch is out of her mind and she does not need a new trial. They should just stick with the one that they have and send her as to jail because that's exactly what she deserves. And as for her sperm donor, he needs to be locked up to put both of them in gin pop. And let the inmates deal with them. I hope that they learn about this story. I hope they are aware of this story because they do not like child uh, people who torture children or people who rape children and molest children, sexually assault children or worse, those who murder children. And those two had a hand in it. And so did D- DCFS because they could have stopped it right then and there. But they didn't. They were too late, just like they were too late with Devontae Hart and his siblings. When they finally decided to make a move, they were on their way to die. And that story still burns me up to this day. Like it's 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 sad. It really is. It's sad all the way around. This girl had no chance. She had no way of getting out. None. And I, like I said, the worst thing that could have happened was her mother going to jail. And that was the only thing that kept her mother from getting custody of her child. Was that incident right? I don't, and the thing is, I don't know what her mother could have done to go to jail, but it couldn't have been that serious because she's out of jail now. But that's besides the point because she wasn't going to get custody of the child, and now the girl is dead. But that's really all I have to say right now until the next update comes along, because I know there's going to be more to come from this. This is definitely not over. But I just wanted you to be aware of this. I'm going to leave the link to this article. If you like I said, if you want to watch the video, you can go right on ahead. If it's too much for you, I'll understand. Just listen to that audio was too much for me. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, have your notifications turned on, and I will talk to you in the next one.